Hi guys, welcome back to a brand new educational video here at Market Wisdom. So glad you joined us this afternoon. If you are joining us uh, for the first time, hit the like button and subscribe. We're uh, continuing doing our best to uh, bring you the, uh, the most educational content we possibly can. Uh, we're going to talk today about blue chip stocks versus momentum stocks or stocks that uh, we, we trade on a daily basis versus maybe an investing kind of approach into the market. Uh, we'll touch on uh, some of the key differences between those stocks and what actually defines a stock as a blue chip stock. Let's bring in Neil and Sean here and get going on blue chips, guys, versus uh, momentum stocks. Sean, we're going to be in your wheelhouse here today, I feel. Tell us about dividends. Sure, why not? Uh, yeah, so dividends again. Most blue chip stocks, I mean, that's sort of the definition there, um, is a stock that's going to, um, you know, carry some weight to it. It's not going to be one of those crazy sort of tech stocks uh, where you're ripping up and down a lot of the times right now. I mean, again, the definition of blue chip has changed a, a lot. It used to be like the General Electrics of the world mm -hmm. or some of those steady as they go banks uh, and whatnot. But really what you're looking for is a stock that can gather a strong cash position and is just one that does pay you an annual, semi-annual, quarterly dividend. And I think that that's such an important thing to have when you're in the stock market. You cannot be in what they call fang stocks for your whole portfolio. Look, if you've been in there for the last little while, it's great. The thing about a dividend-paying stock is you're going to get paid for holding the shares themselves, right? And so uh, I have a few examples. And, and the important thing about when you're looking at dividend stocks and blue chip stocks, most of the blue chip stocks will be in what they call the Dow Jones 30 index, right? And so if you're looking at the Dow Jones, they've recently, not recently, but they've added Apple, they've got Intel in there. They do have some high flyers, but the majority of them, AT&T, sort of steady as they come, mom and pop stocks, right? That's, the, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for those sort of guaranteed returns, but they're not going to be high flyers. And, I, and, and you have to have a percentage of your portfolio in some of those high flyers so that, you know, you're not left behind when you get crazy action uh, like you get right now in the marketplace. But if you're only in blue chip stocks, then you're going to collect the dividends, you're going to sleep better at night, and quite frankly, you're going to be invested, hopefully, in higher quality companies. And I think that's something very, very important when you're talking about your 401ks in the U.S. or your RRSPs here in Canada. Any sort of retirement or investment fund need to have some kind of blue chip in there so that, like I said, A, your portfolio doesn't suffer so much when we have those crazy declines. And at the same time, you are collecting a yield, which would be the dividend, every year you're holding the stock. Again, most stocks paid out quarterly. One of my favorites right now, Disney. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that's worth considering, too, is uh, you know, look, it's, not that, it's not that blue chippers can't have uh, momentum to them. Uh, the easiest way, I think, uh, because as you mentioned, Sean, you know, the, the definition does change over time. Uh, you will always uh, typically find uh, blue chip stocks will be in an index. Uh, that's one of the reasons. The other thing you should also consider is uh, what are the biggest uh, and best of sort of breed names within a sector, right? So whatever the biggest name in a sector is, likely to be a blue chip. Sometimes you can look at, uh, if you go by into a screener, uh, consider the ones with the largest market cap, right? So those are the things you're talking about when it comes to uh, a blue chip. Now, it doesn't have to deal with performance. I'm going to pull up, you know, what is obviously momentum stock. It's good to use extreme examples here. Uh, I'm showing you uh, a Zoom. Look, uh, no one is going to doubt that, especially during this time, you know, Zoom uh, has a great idea. Uh, they're getting wide use and the wide adaptation. Uh, revenues are growing. This is a space everyone wants to be in. Uh, the stock price is going to reflect it over the course of the year, uh, having gone up, you know, from $50 at one point uh, up over 500 today, guys. So uh, this is what we talk about momentum. So Think of things that are leading trends, right? So whether it's trends in the world uh, in, for, from consumers or leading trends in the market, in this case, maybe like the stay at home type of play, that's what's going to be in momentum. And it's not to say that uh, you couldn't have a blue chip stock, uh, which is part of that. Uh, a trend. I mean, you can maybe point to something like an Apple, uh, which can have a trend, uh, a trend and be a blue chip uh, name as well. Uh, but the key thing is, it's a trend setting stock. It's something that uh, might be new, uh, uh, that's, that's coming into vogue. So uh, think of those two separate things. They're not always exclusive. Uh, but if you're going to be uh, de developing a portfolio, some people will use it, and I like this personally, some people will use that whole 10% rule. 
uh, I think that a lot of times can apply to either uh, your momentum stocks, or that 10% safer in the 90%, or it can just uh, uh, simply apply to riskier names that you're going to be maybe more active in getting in and out of. Because on a momentum stock, you might not be holding it for the duration. You might actually be saying, okay, I got a breakout. You know, I don't know, Zoom, uh, you picked it up at, at, on a break of like 180 and, and you want to take it out at 250 or a time horizon, like a vaccine comes out and you're going to sell it. Oftentimes with a momentum play, you might be considering that. With a blue chipper, nah, that's usually not the way you're going to be treating it in your portfolio. So we're talking about the, the sound companies, the big boys, the, you know, the actual businesses that have actual products that people rely on that have been around for years that will be around for the coming years uh, versus the stocks that are maybe just popping up in play because of a new product or a new technology or something that is moving them in either direction. Uh, I want to touch on J&J uh, &J here, guys. We had a little bit of uh, a, a news kind of related story uh, when it comes to J&J &J and uh, vaccine news today. Yeah, we can show my chart, guys, if you want. I, I mean, it's just the chart of today and J&J. And J&J &J. Uh, &J going to be included on the, on the blue chip side of things. But let's talk a little bit maybe about how, yes, a stock can be a blue chip stock but also provide you with decent momentum opportunities when there are extra catalysts. So uh, perfect example there. And it's funny because I, was, I had J&J &J up and we never threw to it. So thanks for bringing that up. J&J &J is a perfect example. It's about... It's about a 3 to 4% dividend. Obviously, that's going to change with the price. That, that's how it works. The dividend yield is based on the price and how much they're paying per quarter. You know, you get a dollar per quarter, and it's a $100 stock. Then that's 1% times that by four quarters, and you got a 4% dividend yield, right? So that's how it works. Now, the beauty about holding on to blue chip stocks, I think this is a great example here. I have now, this is September 2020, all the way to March of 2019, right? Here you get... What happened to us in here, unfortunately, with the pandemic and COVID-19? J&J just cruising uh, basically to all-time highs, 154, 155. And then look at this move back down, right? It's a big move down, but it's nothing like what you saw in the Apples and the Teslas in any of those sort of high flyers or momentum-based stocks. So with that being said, what you do for, for dividend-paying stocks or blue-chip stocks, we, we went back and forth there about talking about what qualifies them. Basically, if you're a market leader, then you're going to be a blue chip stock, right? So, so right here, J&J, &J, and again, that's maybe besides Zoom. Zoom is, is uh, a year old, so uh, that may turn into a blue chip stock, but not yet. Uh, right now, this is what you do. You basically buy every quarter, and you don't worry about the price. So you're getting some shares here. You're taking some more shares here, you're, and then you're buying down here. You're buying down here again, and you just keep on buying in all of these dips. And then what winds up happening is you're going to have a nice average price because the buy that you make up here gets averaged in by the buy that you make down here. So this is how a lot of money managers take risk on and then off again. So what they're doing is they're averaging in and dumping. Let's just say if you want to invest $100 a month into a stock, if you did that every month for J&J, &J, this is a day, find 20 spots and just pick it every single time and you're going to get a nice average price. And then when it declines like this, it's a market leader. This stock is not going to go down to zero. There's so many of them that we can call up right now. We can call up any of the telecom stocks. It'd be the same thing. You can call up JP Morgan, any of the banks. The banks have a little more risk, as does J&J, &J, right? Falls back down here. Then what you're going to do is whenever you break key support levels like this, 128, one whatever, you want to maybe average in even a little deeper as as it starts to go because most blue chip stocks when the market rallies back what's going to happen is hedge funds individual investors like myself we say uh oh we need to get into this kind of a stock because it's about as steady as it can come and it helps you balance the other stocks that you have i'll give you a good example the other day i bought and i, and I put this out there for for all of our viewers i bought more apple shares and more J.P. Morgan shares. So you take one that's a little bit of a momentum stock, although Apple's kind of one of those stocks that's in between, and then you also buy a big dividend-paying stock, 4 or 5% with the bank. So what you're doing is you're sort of getting a double bang for your buck there. That's how I believe investments should work. You should have at least... 30 to 40% of your portfolio in these blue chip stocks. And the uh, again, depending on your age, you're going to want to have some money put into these blue chip stocks so that you can withhold and sleep at night so you don't have to worry about a stock like J&J &J tanking 20 or 30% in one day. 
Yeah, I think the, the best example I think I can, I can use to counter that because it just so happens uh, I have a lot of names in the vaccine space. So J&J &J is a great example. Uh, but NVAX, I think... Uh, provides you with an opportunity to maybe see. Uh, you looked at J&J, &J, it has like a 10% range. Uh, we've seen these things to sort of move around uh, from time to time. Uh, but if you were to look at a daily chart of something like, uh, something like an NVAX, when this one comes down, you talk about wanting to buy on dips in a blue chip. Uh, when this comes off, uh, uh, top here at 190, uh, the buyers that come in on the way down aren't going to exist in a momentum. Well, not that they don't exist. Uh, they're just not going to exist at the same level uh, like they would in a Johnson & Johnson or a Pfizer. So, so what happens is support gets broken a lot easier, and it might not be the same buying opportunity. And that's, uh, that's an important thing to understand, that if you're going to be uh, investing in these non-blue chip names or, or buying them, you have to have a different sense of uh, you know, what would cause you to get out of it. For, for blue chippers, you know, the answer for some people is almost nothing. Uh, when it comes to uh, the other end of the coin where 100% retracement, 50% retracements, all these things are going to happen to you. Uh, you have to keep that in mind. I just look at the, the contrast between vaccine developers, where J&J &J has a product line, which um, it, it would take the rest of this, uh, this hour uh, to talk about it. But NVAX, uh, you know, like you could count it on one hand. So uh, obviously there's going to be more volatility there, and that's one thing uh, you have to consider. Not to say there's never volatility in a blue chip. Uh, of course, that's not true. And there we go, guys, a little bit of a look at uh, the difference, key differences between blue chip stocks and uh, what we like to refer to as momentum stocks or stocks that are uh, in play for a period of time, whether it be uh, days or hours even or weeks and months, as we've seen with some of the uh, newer electric vehicle names that have come into play as of late. I uh, hope you learned something there about uh, blue chip stocks and why, yes, they are great investments, but maybe not providing you with uh, ultimate uh, day trading type opportunities. Uh, let's go over to Valeria. Hey Brandon, thank you for this great explanation. Guys, please subscribe to this channel and join our live trading show every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Time.